Hi everyone, thanks for joining. Today we're talking about dev tunnels and how you can use it to securely test and debug your web apps and webhooks. My name is Carolina and I am the product manager for dev tunnels. Hi, I'm Jake. I'm a dev on the dev tunnels team. So for today, I will just give a very brief overview of what is dev tunnels. I'll share some really exciting announcements. And then Jake's going to be doing two demos, a GitHub webhooks demo and a web app demo. And then I will wrap everything up with some takeaways. Throughout our presentation, if you are wondering, how do I get started? Where is the documentation? Or where do I submit issues? I'd recommend scanning this QR code now or just going to the AKA link. That will take you to our link tree, which has all of those links they might be looking for. So DevTunnels is a really powerful way to securely connect your local endpoint to a public endpoint. And this is to enhance your productivity when you are testing and debugging the webhooks, web apps, or APIs. And today I want to highlight a few different ways we see our customers using DevTunnels. The first is testing a web app on other devices like a mobile phone or a tablet. And there's of course other ways to do that, but DevTunnels makes it so easy. You get a DevTunnel URL, and you can just access that on your physical device for testing. You can also use DevTunnels to test an app with external services like Power Platform Connectors, Azure Communication Service APIs, Teams apps, or GitHub webhooks, and so much more. You can also use DevTunnels to share in progress work with others. So let's say that you're working with a client and you just want to share with them the current latest updates. You can create a persistent DevTunnel URL send them an, an email with that URL, and at their own time later that day, let's say, they can access it. Or if you were at a hackathon and you were demoing what you built over the weekend, you can create QR code, and when folks pass by your booth, you can tell them, hey, scan this QR code, and you can see what's running on my local host for yourself. And DevTunnels is not new, it is fully integrated and built into Visual Studio, and it's been in public preview for these past few months. And we have just been getting so much feedback of how easy it is to get started and to use DevTunnels in Visual Studio. But today, we're so excited to announce it is now generally available, which means you no longer have to enable it in options. It's simply in the debug dropdown. And as we hear from all of you, we hear that we love this experience in Visual Studio. But there are scenarios where I would like to create DevTunnels outside of Visual Studio. So today, we're also really proud to announce the DevTunnel command line interface. And with our CLI, you can do just that. You can create and manage your DevTunnels outside of Visual Studio. And this is in public preview, and there are links to our docs for VS and the DevTunnel CLI right here. And also, in that QR code you scanned earlier, there is a link to a GitHub repo where you can submit issues or feedback, or is anything you want to share with us about the DevTunnel CLI. And as the product manager of DevTunnels, I of course want to be notified as soon as possible when a new issue is submitted. So I was chatting with Jake if there's a way we can do that. And right now he's going to walk through how he set that all up using GitHub webhooks and DevTunnels so I could be texted when a new GitHub issue is open in our repo. Hi. So yeah, I'm going to show how we can set up a locally running server with GitHub webhooks. So first, I've been doing some local development, and I have a local HTTP server that's listening on port 4567. And whenever it gets a request, it's going to send Carolina a text message. So now I just need to set this up with GitHub webhooks. So we can go to the repo where we want to create the webhook, go to Settings, Webhooks, and add a new webhook. Now, we need to give a payload URL. I have this server running locally, which means I just have a local host URL, so I need to get something that GitHub can connect to. That's where DevTunnels comes in. So let's go over to CLI and create this payload URL. The first thing I need to do is log in. I can do this using DevTunnel, user, login, and then the dash G flag since I want to log in with my GitHub account. Now we can see that I'm logged in, and I can create the tunnel using the DevTunnel, create command. Now we need to add the port that we want to use to connect to the local server, which is port 4567. 
we can do this using dev tunnel, port, create, dash p, four, five, six, seven. Finally, we need to give this port anonymous access so that GitHub webhooks can call it. We can do this using the dev tunnel access command. Dev tunnel access create, and then the dash a flag for anonymous access. Now that all that's done, we can go ahead and host the tunnel using dev tunnel host. This is going to give us two URLs, one URL where the port's hosted, and one URL where we can inspect the traffic, but more on that later. For now, let's just take the hosting URL. We can go back to the webhook and paste that in the payload. And we're listening on the slash payload endpoint. We can update the content type. And we want to hear about all the events that happened on this repo. We can go ahead and create this webhook. Now let's create an issue to test the delivery of the webhook. We can create an issue called test issue, submit it, and let's go back to settings to see what happened. We can go back to the webhook and see the two recent deliveries. The first is a ping event when we first opened the webhook, and the second was when we opened up a new issue. And now, going to Carolina, we can see that she just received a text message from our local server connected to the GitHub webhook. Sweet. So now I will know every time a new issue is submitted. I'll be texted as soon as that happens. Thanks, Jake. Yeah, this is just a great example of how you can use dev tunnels to connect webhooks to your local environment so you don't have to deploy your code to test webhooks. Now let's move on to the second demo where we're going to show how we can use dev tunnels to share our code with another coworker or a friend just so they can test our app. OK, so now moving on to our second demo, I'm going to show how you can use dev tunnels to expose your local projects so that coworkers can connect to them. So here, I have a local web app that just allows you to vote on your favorite pet. As we can see, I'm hosting it, and we can connect to it on port 5080 and 7080. Let's use dev tunnel CLI to create a public URL. I can do this all in one command using dev tunnel host, and then the port number that I want to connect to, which is 5080, and then the dash A flag so that we give anonymous access to this tunnel so that anyone can connect. Once I run this, I get two URLs. The first one is the hosting URL where I can connect to the tunnel, and the second one is a URL where I can inspect the traffic. Let's open up both of these. The first thing I see when I connect to the tunnel is a warning page letting the user know that they're connecting to a developer tunnel and not a production resource. I can just click Continue on this, and we won't see it again. Now I can open up a QR code that Carolina can scan, and she can start voting. Got it. So I'm going to start voting now. Hey. And if we refresh. Jake, I'm voting for cat right now, and the counter is not increasing. That's weird. I keep refreshing the page, and I see all the votes for capybara. It looks like you just really like capybaras. <laughs> Let's check the inspection page and see all the requests that are going through the tunnel. Wow. It looks like the cat handler was hit a bunch of times, but we don't see any votes for cat. There must be something wrong with our code. Let's go check it out. Hmm. As we can see here, this is what happens when cat's voted for. And oh, it looks like there's a bug where we're always incrementing capybara instead of cat. So let's fix that. OK, and now we can restart our application. And once it's done building, since we're using a dev tunnel, Carolina can use the exact same URL and continue voting. And hopefully, we can see the new changes on our app are correctly reflected. Sweet. Yep. yep. Looks like the votes for cat are coming in now. So yeah, that's just a great example of how you can share your code with coworkers, and you can use the inspection page to debug issues. So now back to Carolina with some closing thoughts. Thank you, Jake. I'm glad the cats were able to get their votes. So thank you all for joining us today. We just want to wrap up with a couple of different you know, reasons why you should use dev tunnels. The first is DevTunnels is secure by default. So when you create a DevTunnel, it is only accessible to you unless you specify otherwise. So in the second demo, Jake decided to allow anonymous access so I can go in and vote. 
We also support persistent URLs for scenarios that need to keep the same URL. So if you're developing webhooks or if you simply want to keep the same URL when you close Visual Studio and reopen it. We also support multiple simultaneous ports on a single tunnel at the same time. And we have global service availability. So tunnels are always created in the closest available region. So for example, right now, Jake and I are in Seattle, Washington. And if you noticed, the tunnels he created were in West US. And finally, we also have tunnel inspection. So you can inspect traffic that's sent across the tunnel, which is just really helpful for debugging, like we saw in the second demo, when the cats were not getting their votes counted, it was going towards the capybaras. We were able to discover that through tunnel inspection. So that's all for today. Thank you all for listening. This is the QR code from earlier if you missed it. It brings you to our link tree, which has a link to our documentation and our GitHub repo where you can submit issues. And we just look forward to seeing how you can use dev tunnels to enhance your productivity when you are testing and debugging your web apps, webhooks, and APIs. Thanks all.